Good morning, good afternoon, actually, to everyone. Um, yes, I'm the one that was uh, responsible for saying to Professor Singh this morning uh, that I miss cars because I'm living in Venice now. Um, but after his presentation, I will definitely rethink of what I said. Uh, the data was a little bit strong, so I have to uh, think back of what I did uh, mention. Uh, I would also like to thank Professor Robnik and the organizers of the Out of the Box Conference uh, for their kind invitation to attend. Uh, I am very honored and pleased to be here this morning to represent UNESCO. I hope you have an idea of what UNESCO stands for. It is the United Nations Educational, Scientific and Cultural Organization. And I'm also very pleased to convey the greetings of our Director General, Mrs. Irina Bukova, and the Director of the UNESCO Venice Office, Mrs. Yolanda Valenef, to all the participants and to the friends of the Slovenian National Commission for UNESCO here today as well. Um, I will briefly uh, give you a little bit of information on UNESCO's contributions to global challenges. I admit the presentation's a little boring, <laughs> there's a lot of information, uh, but I will be also repeating a lot of key words that I think you'll understand because it's what our organization is trying to contribute to global challenges. <clears throat> The, uh, if you are aware, UNESCO was uh, uh, established in 1945 after the Second World War, and its uh, constitution was elaborated and signed on the 16th of November, 1945, in London. It came into force in, on the 4th of November, 1946, when it was ratified by 20 countries. As you can see uh, in our constitution, this is the, the main phrase in our preamble that uh, since wars begin in the minds of men, it is in the minds of men that the defenses of peace must be constructed. So um, basically the UNESCO through education, through science, through cultural relations of the peoples of the world and the objectives of international peace, it's also the benefit for the common welfare of mankind. So just as man can create destruction, can also think of uh, uh, dis uh, dis uh, creating problems, it is also in the minds of these men and women to create uh, peace and uh, to forward and, and uh, avoid instability. From our, uh, whoops, sorry, there we are, okay. As you can see, the mission statement of UNESCO is that it contributes to the building of peace, the eradication of poverty, sustainable development, and intercultural dialogue through, again, education, the sciences, culture, communication, and information. Uh, we do this with, we have priorities and objectives. The two global priorities are Africa and gender equality. As the focal point of the Venice Office for Gender and Youth Issues, I'm very pleased that UNESCO is a UN agency on the forefront of gender equality. Um, we have really put it as a, a main priority. And when I say gender, I don't mean only women, I mean men and women, so a balance and equality between men and women. The overarching objectives, of course, are to attain quality education for all and lifelong, lifelong learning. This is a fundamental basic human right. To mobilize science, knowledge, and policy for sustainable development. To address emerging social and ethical challenges, making, for example, science more responsible could be one point. Fostering cultural diversity, intercultural dialogue, and the culture of peace and building inclusive knowledge societies through information and communication. So in fulfilling the mis mission, UNESCO carries out uh, five established functions. It's a laboratory of ideas, including foresight. It's a standard setter. It acts as a clearinghouse for the dissemination of information. It is a capacity builder in member states in our fields of competence. And it acts as a catalyst for international cooperation. Now, as I mentioned, I'm working now at the UNESCO Venice office. It is the Regional Bureau for Science and Culture in Europe. Uh, we are in a beautiful Venetian palace uh, called Palazzo Zorzi. There's a few shots from the external and internal. Uh, we're very fortunate to, to, to be there. It's thanks to the contribution of the Italian government and the municipality of Venice. And we've been there since uh, March 2002. 
uh, yes, 2002. Um, just a little bit of a short uh, history of the Venice office. Uh, it was a response after the devastating high waters or aqua altas of 1966. UNESCO launched its international campaign to save the safeguarding of Venice. In 1973, it established a small cultural liaison office in St. Mark's Square. And uh, later, in 1987, the city of Venice and the lagoon were inscribed on the famous UNESCO World Heritage Sites, uh, protected word, World Heritage Sites. The regional office for science and technology was decentralized to Venice in late 1988. So we had two offices in Venice, the cultural office and the scientific office. Um, in 2006, uh, the, the former director general, Mr. Matsura, uh, changed our denomination of the office and unified the two units together. So as I said, we are known as the UNESCO Venice Office, Regional Bureau for Science and Culture in Europe. It uh, gives a better, it was also the name change uh, gave uh, a better description of what the office does, our work, and in particular, uh, also our geographic uh, coverage, which is uh, southeastern Europe and the Mediterranean region. And our mandate, of course, is to foster cooperation, contribute to capacity building, and to provide specialized expertise in science and culture, again, in the areas of Southeast Europe and the Mediterranean region. So it's, a, it's quite a large uh, area of coverage as well. So uh, perhaps many of you might recognize UNESCO in particularly with its uh, cultural activities. Um, UNESCO is uh, um, the general activities in culture are aimed at reinforcing its unique contribution to social and economic development and preserving and promoting cultural heritage, cultural diversity, and the shared heritage, the safeguarding of tangible and intangible heritage, traditions, customs, beliefs. In 2012, the World Heritage Convention is celebrating its 40th anniversary. The, as I was mentioning before, the colleagues in the culture unit of our office uh, are very active in Southeast European uh, countries, and uh, they are promoting this initiative of a bridge towards a shared future. Many activities uh, include uh, cultural heritage in the service of mutual understanding and development, cultural heritage, uh, and, excuse me, cultural diversity and intercultural dialogue, promotion of the cultural diversity of cultural, excuse me, promotion of the diversity of cultural expressions and other activities related to the UNESCO conventions. Uh, it is also uh, very active in uh, this new vision of Southeast Europe. Um, a shared cultural heritage is a necessary step in furthering both mutual understanding among Southeastern European peoples and the sustainable socio-economic development of the region. So uh, with the, the uh, collaboration of the Italian government as well, the culture unit of the Venice office organizes a series, uh, it's been organizing a series of ministerial conferences. The first was in Mostar in 2004, and then as you can see in Venice, um, it was in Belgrade in 2011, and if I'm not mistaken, I think that in 2013, it may also be conducted the next ministerial conference here in Slovenia. Here, uh, just some idea of the cultural conventions that UNESCO and our office is uh, working towards. Uh, UNESCO conventions are usually uh, adopted by the General Conference, which meets every two years in Paris in our headquarters, and uh, they are a legal binding document that are subject to ratification by the member states. So you can see we have the Convention on Underwater Cultural Heritage, the, again, diversity and cultural expressions. There's the Convention on the Safeguarding of an Intangible Heritage, the Universal Declaration on Cultural Diversity, uh, and uh, other recent, other former ones, the Protection of uh, Cultural and Natural Heritage, I'll speak about that in a few minutes, and uh, the, also the illicit import and export of transfer of cultural property. If you visit our website, www.unesco.org slash Venice, and you look in the culture section, uh, you may see, we have uploaded a, a video recently 
on the uh, problems of illicit import and export of cultural property. So it's, it's quite interesting to go in and see. So the, the S in UNESCO means science, uh, not only natural sciences, but also the social sciences. And it's also now we have connected it to the S for sustainable development. UNESCO began sounding the alarm for the need of sustainable development back in 1968 uh, after a conference questioned the unbridled exploitation of nature. Science provides knowledge, tools, skills, and to, to tackle global challenges such as uh, climate change, increasing natural disasters, biodiversity loss, environmental degradation on land and in the oceans, and economic uncertainty. Sustainable development is a moral as well as a scientific concept, and it is closely linked to peace, human rights, and equity. So just as the cultural section has the famous World Heritage Sites, the famous World Protected Sites, also in the science sector, we have a world network of biosphere reserves, which are part of the program that's called Man and Biosphere, MAB. These uh, biosphere reserves are sites of excellence where new and optimal practices to manage nature and human activities are tested or demonstrated. Uh, for example, their sustainable tourism development and the quality of economy development. There are here also many contributions to the United Nations Decade for the Education of Sustainable Development are also done. Um, initiatives towards natural risk preparedness, the territorial governance of specific sites. This is more for the managers of the specific sites, how to, to create a, an operational management plan, and of course, energy efficiency. The Venice Office, the science unit of the Venice, uh, Venice Office, also provides specific coaching and training, capacity building activities on these events. Another uh, area that uh, the science unit is dealing with uh, uh, is this idea of transboundary, the shared water issues in Southeast Europe. Uh, in fact, yesterday I was on the train and the train was traveling parallel alongside uh, the magnificent river, and uh, it was just absolutely beautiful, even though it was raining and snowing at certain points. Uh, <laughs> it was very beautiful to see just how, uh, first of all, clean it was, and how there we, I noticed that there were electrical facilities uh, for energy, um, people with boats uh, for, for transportation, and I assume probably fishing and, uh, and other, other economic uh, um, uses. So here, of course, there's the regional cooperation with the Danube countries, uh, particular activities with the water and sediment balance, eco-hydrology with the deltas and the estuaries, uh, the internationally shared water systems, and water government governance, uh, the building up of uh, policy uh, options, this idea of water, shared water diplomacy. Last year in Venice, we had a small meeting uh, with representatives from the Southeastern European countries uh, on uh, how to, to effectively uh, share water because uh, unfortunately there is some prediction that uh, in the future uh, the possible conflicts will be due to the scarcity of fresh water resources. So if uh, we can, we as UNESCO, uh, st help to promote uh, this idea of sharing water issues I think this might be able to, shall we say, a little bit to uh, remove this threat of, uh, of future conflicts. Um, and then, of course, there's the other activities with the river corridors, the Sava, Drin, the Drava, Mura rivers, the lakes, uh, Ohrid, Prespa, Prespa, and Skadar, and these um, cooperations for developing sustainable development models, again, through the biosphere reserves that I mentioned before. In uh, the science unit, so we also deal with science policy. Uh, since uh, March 2001, the Venice office has been contributing to the rebuilding, the restructuring of scientific co cooperation in the Southeastern European region. Um, and it's also not only with the region, but also connecting with the rest of Europe. Uh, and uh, during the, the conference in March of 2001, this Venice process was launched which was actually where an opportunity where high-level ministers uh, 
academies, universities, uh, all got together in Venice and discussed how they could rebuild the scientific system uh, after the conflicts that had happened in, this, uh, in the, the countries of Southeast Europe. Um, the Venice office has also provided advice and expertise to raise public awareness and public and private awareness on investing in science and technology. Uh, in 2006, here in Slovenia, Ljubljana, there was an important uh, international conference entitled Why Invest in Science in Southeast European Europe? And uh, uh, we also have provided uh, policy and advice for uh, countries to develop, for example, Bosnia and Herzegovina and Albania to develop their own national uh, strategi strategies in science, technology and innovation. Uh, just quickly, some other activities we do uh, in the basic sciences. Uh, we also support scientific networks, uh, we, uh, for example, in seismology, astronomy, mathematics and physics. We are also uh, involved in some courses that are, shall we say, uh, designated for managers of World Heritage Sites on risk preparedness. Last week, a colleague of mine was in Albania, and they were working together with uh, ICROM, which is an international uh, organization for the conservation and preservation of, um, of monuments in uh, the, um, I think it was in Butrint uh, as well. So uh, where they were discussing simple basic problems that, for example, the, the fire departments in certain areas don't have the sufficient equipment or even personnel if a fire, which is, uh, can, be, uh, can happen, would destroy all the, 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 the culture, shall we say, and the heritage there. Uh, in Gender and Youth, uh, in 2007, our office contributed to the International Report on Science, Technology, and Gender. And my little friend up on the top holding a glass of water is the pet pal called Nameless, which I'll speak about in just a few minutes, even though I know this is not the right audience, but I'm sure you might have children at home or nieces and nephews or cousins. Anyway, just one word quickly. Uh, everyone may be aware of this uh, important uh, partnership with L'Oreal and UNESCO to uh, promote women in scientific research. Uh, it is uh, done on a yearly basis. Uh, five women, five leading women researchers uh, representing all five continents are awarded. And then since 2000, the year 2000, they have also expanded to create the fellowships, UNESCO Women, uh, sorry, the L'Oreal and UNESCO Women uh, for Research uh, Fellowships uh, for 15 young uh, women, either in their doctorate or postdoctorate level, to continue their research. Uh, just before, again, uh, here, the science needs, uh, the world needs science and science needs women. I would just make a small correction and put that the world needs science, but science needs people. So I wouldn't just distinguish. And as I was mentioning before, uh, these are our friends. These are called the pet pals. We are collaborating with the international uh, network, uh, sorry, the Italian uh, network, RAI, uh, RAI Fiction, and this Gruppo Alcuni. Uh, it is an Italian uh, cartoon and animation uh, company. We're um, on this H2O initiative. So as the title can uh, lead you on, it, it is uh, something that uh, deals with water issues. But it's specifically for children. Children are the main actors. Children. They design the stories on storyboards. They present the problems, so it can be water pollution, water preservation, uh, water recycling, whatever. And they also provide a solution. So once these cartoon, or sorry, these storyboards are received, this group Alcuni transforms them into small cartoons, two, three minute cartoons. And uh, they really show and express uh, the children's, school-aged children from 6 to 16, 15, uh, their ideas on water. Um, they, we are uh, really getting involved in this idea because we want to give it an international, shall we say, stamp. Uh, even because uh, we've noticed that what children in one country, for example, Africa, consider important on water issues can be completely different to what a child in North America thinks of uh, water problems or what water pollution is. So if we can, we are now trying to encourage uh, 
all countries to participate, all schools to participate and uh, express their creativity. And also for, I think, the, the children themselves, the students themselves, it's an opportunity to share with their peers their experiences and proposals for protecting the environment. So they're also, what they say and what they think is important to, as well. And uh, just to tie everything back together, uh, I started off with one thing and then I got into another area. Um, UNESCO's future role, what, uh, what the organization is really uh, working on and interested in, in developing a global consciousness. So something that I heard uh, this morning and some of the other discussions, a way of rethinking, perhaps relearning, um, developing this global consciousness for a culture of peace. Uh, so uh, we have to recognize that there is the multiplicity of worldviews and cultural identities, but we also need to think about the world and find a shape uh, and find, find a way how to shape our presence into the, the, the world, the society as well. Uh, this perhaps can be done by raising consciousness in various settings, particularly in teaching and decision making. Again, here we need the help. Uh, I noticed that uh, some people mentioned this morning that policy makers or decision makers aren't really involved. Here we're trying to, to give them the information and make, make them be involved and provide and develop tools that are suitable for men and women to, uh, to relate and to approach problems, either distinctly but hopefully in a unified manner, because altogether, as the image shows, uh, if one piece is missing, it, it does create a difference. And just to finish off, uh, I just wanted to take a few statements that the Director General has mentioned. and. Uh, this is, again, how we think the organization will contribute to global challenges, is that UNESCO has a leading role to play in building a global human community. The stakes of peace uh, lie precisely in education, science, culture, and communications. They are the foundations of sustainable development. And these are also the pillars of the organization's new humanism approach. Um, so I Thank you for your attention. If you have any questions or anything, I'll be here to answer them. If you want more information, please do visit our website. Uh, again, it's uh, the www.unesco.org slash Venice, or else the, the UNESCO central one is uh, www.unesco.org, without the Venice. Thank you very much.